All right, welcome everybody to the top four game of the DXM 2021, the official unofficial uh, German region national championship here on TTS. Uh, with me today is again uh, one pillar of the German X-Wing community, Dali. Hello. Hi, guys. And we have Phil Pont from the Firestorm Squadron Firecast with us. Hi. Hello. So as you can see, we have Julian Hood versus Nicholas God. We uh, have had both players on stream so far. Uh, Julian, living in the UK, uh, you know him well, uh, Phil. Uh, can you tell us about uh, his list a little bit? Sure thing. Yep, Jules, I know uh, very well. Um, so he's running a list he's been running for quite a while now. It's uh, four ship Imperials, all at I-4. You've got Fifth Brothers. Um, fifth brother with um, passive sensors and home missiles. You got seventh, sis uh, seventh sister with passive sensors and mag pulse warheads. Ved Foslo with passive sensors, and finally death rain with passive sensors, diamond boron missiles, thermal detonators, and delayed fuses. So and uh, Niklas got Nielsen playing a uh, scum list. Um, Dali, did did you have the time to get familiar with the list? And can us uh, can you tell us a little bit about that list? Not completely, but what we see is Toko Mux with Sam Vassal, so the extra shooting guy, terminal detonators, and multi core. So he gets some uh, extra damage from the detonators. And to, to, together with Captain Justero, little synergy, you can see Tirani Kulda, cluster missiles, R5, TK, and munitions failsafe. So it's good with custom missiles, three dice, munition failsafe. It's a good choice. And a little Black Sun Enforcer, which I like. I'm not seen it before, so I'm happy with it to see a Star Viper flying around. Yeah, especially a, a generic one, which is not uh, being uh, flown in a, in, a, in a four Star Viper list. Um, and, yeah. we, and we have seen uh, yesterday, um, how uh, how dangerous that Star Viper can be, especially against lower initiative ships. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not the case uh, today, uh, but but still, he has done some work. The Black Sun Enforcer. That's a good ship, tanky, and also five uh, hull. So yeah, also it's difficult to bring it down to the half. So a little bit uh, saving points here. I think it's the reason why the Star Viper four ship lists had a good outcoming in the last two two years. Yeah. I'm, so they are pop off here and here and there. Not a big, not a big uh, advantage in a tournament. I'm not really sure that they win a tournament. Uh, not on their own, no. Um, you've had lists with Vipers in it that have won them, and it's a great blocker. I mean, I see it in the chat already, and I completely agree. It's Star Viper chassis is one of the most maneuverable chassis in the game. We all know what happens when you um, have Guri without maneuver and advanced sensors. It's just insane. So this one, okay, the Black Sun Enforcer, bog standard, no Virago title, no uh, ad sensors. It's just a plain standard um, Star Viper at i2 now the i2 doesn't matter in this particular matchup um too much in terms of low initiative ships uh there's nothing he's going to be um out initiating but however as a blocker julian's going to have to be very aware of where the viper can go with those bendy barrel rolls and the boost and everything else it's going to be a um a very difficult thing for jules to predict um in terms of the matchup here uh both players i know uh fairly well jules has said it's not that far from me we see each other a bunch of tournaments uh nicholas i've known for a few years now from going out to sweden uh i know all the guys in wampa squadron quite well uh, and i've met him around uh, a few of the uk tournaments as well so it's all very good um yeah both sides of the board i think this will be i was saying to this before we came on air i think whoever wins this matchup probably will go on to win it all but you know we'll see i'm not going to doom whoever ends up facing them in the final but um yeah, who's, who have you got your money on here, guys? Oh, really hard to tell. I mean, we have both such 
good and experienced players uh, on uh, both sides of the board. Um, uh, I mean, Julian has a lot of stuff uh, for getting crits uh, onto onto the scum ships. Uh, Jostro, Tyrannicolda, um, and Torkoal Marks, they don't have a lot of agility, so it's um, easier to get the crits through uh, soon in the game. And we have seen uh, yesterday uh, on stream in Julian's game uh, that when he was really aggressive and put a lot of damage onto the, the ships pretty soon, uh, it sometimes can surprise uh, the enemy. I think Niklas obviously is aware of that. Um, he, he he knows Julian. Uh, he, I think he knows his list. He has played this list in some other bigger tournaments before. Um, my money would be on Nicholas here uh, because he has like so many tools in his lists. He has uh, bombs against the Imperial Aces. He has um, Zem Wessel. He's got a Snapshot. He's got uh, Just Retrigging. He has. A, a really really good uh, blocker in the black sun enforcer um it's going to be a tough matchup and it's i think it's going to be a close game uh but in the end i would bet on on nicholas yeah and what about you dally i thought about the uh, winning conditions here i think tokel mux and tuani is fast can can go fast down and it's, it's a good news for julian because the ships of julian are nearly a quarter in points and if you can manage to keep down total mooks and captain jester you have um 102 points and if you can keep Desu in alive it's hard to for Nicholas to coming up. Yeah, with so, having the, the numbers in, in the hat, I think that's always uh, a good thing to know uh, which ship yeah, my you, point, you want to go for. And yeah, sorry. My point is it's, it's a, it's a calcul calculation game here. Yeah. Indeed. I don't know if uh, Nicholas uh, chose to be first player uh, or was given first player, but actually, I do think that if given the option, if Nicholas um, was presented, that he would take first player primarily for that uh, snapshot uh, trigger. Do you know why he's starting though with one charge active on Zam? Uh, he, should, he should both be inactive since he didn't uh, hasn't become a defender yet. Nope. Sam Russell is uh, for me. Uh, I have to read the text for me allowed because yeah. <laughs> i don't check it anyway <laughs> well, it, it, it's like you start with um both charges uh inactive and then using um one of the two condition cards either uh you should thank me or you better mean uh business uh you can then regen the charges but only after becoming the defender or after yeah. in the end in the end phase if you're in uh, a enemy ship's firing arc, you can reveal it to regain yeah. both charges. So I don't know why he's starting with the one active. Um, it was the reason, I think, yeah, it's depending on the, on the opponent. So no one has uh, an arc here and no No, defense. so he should not have that active if, if Judge wants to just go and... Uh, Twitch is saying uh, Tarani shot him. So ah, that would be why. He shot his own Zam with Tarani and failed safe the dice. Ah, uh, because of the uh, R5? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what he's for. And this is why Niklas wins tournaments, because he's very, very clever. <laughs> Correct. Okay, I don't saw the, the synergy here, but yes, you can uh, charge up your Sam Russell by yourself. Yeah. Well, what it means is if you don't, uh, if you end up in a enemy ship's firing arc and you've got both those charges, charges active, if they don't shoot you, you just spend both those charges and shoot them. So it's a very good way of getting both charges active early and getting those. Um, you see, that's exactly what he's doing here as well, is getting those charges charged up as fast as he can. Mm. Um, it's a very good way of getting that bonus attack very, very quickly. And um, When you have uh, a lot of double tapping triggers, when you have damage with Jostero or Tarani, it's a lot of good uh, synergy here. I'm not quite sure why he's got the Star Viper out so far at the moment, but 
Again, there's probably a reason for that. Jules, for me, in this matchup, has to be extremely careful. Um, we know, we've seen this in the last game. Um, <laughs> sorry, Nick just called me out there because I haven't listened to the latest Fly Better episode. No, I haven't because I've, I've, I've been busy. But not the point. Um, I now lost my train of thought. You know, Jules has to be very careful with engaging with this. As we saw in the last game, what can happen with the uh, bullseye triggers and with um, Snapshot and Tarani. We know what can happen there. Jules will be very much aware of that. Um, and he'll want to try and avoid that as much as possible. So maybe he's trying to use the Star Viper as some sort of bait uh, mm. that he wants to go the Empire ships uh, for, yeah. for for the Black Sun Enforcer. Uh, and maybe yes. give, give give the other scum ships to, uh, to give them more time to get around the the board. Yeah, he's playing around. And give you an option that the, the Julian may be K turn. Yeah. So you are in behind, but mm, in the back of the of the pulk. Mm. Mm. No. But indeed, yeah, the, the, the scum list can you come on the table and see four ships, but basically basically a five or six ship list because you have a, um, a two extra attacks here, a little a little a little denga in your ship, mm -hmm. <laughs> denga ability. Yeah, pseudo pseudo denga. And, yeah, the most most people are not scared by an. Uh, Tokel Mooks in their multi crawl, but here you have three dice, two times, and a lot of focus. So you can underestimate it. Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, that's, a, that's why Jules is going to be very careful in case he won't go off the bait. Uh, Nicholas um, will try it, and I think that. So Jules may end up, I was about to say, he may end up um, just doing K-turns and coming back at the other side of the board, but no, he's going to go around the, the bottom here with Death Rain. Um, not sure if he's taking the bait or if he's just um, going to try and come through and cut off um, some of the routes through the middle, but we get to see. Yeah, like the Fire Spirit in middle base uh, is also very fast. Sometimes you... Uh, don't get it that Desrin is uh, a fast flying ship. Hmm. Yeah, Desrin can be deceptively fast, especially with the um, thermal detonator drop boost, uh, then move uh, action and uh, barrel as well. So you can be um, in position. Um, yeah, yeah. The uh, often both players are very. Um, some underestimating things or <laughs> mechanics here. Sometimes I think it's the reason why not so experienced players are overwhelmed from such lists. Uh, yeah, because uh, you have to understand all the synergies and all the th stuff that is happening there. And if you're playing lists like these for the first times, uh, you're probably overwhelmed with, with all the stuff, uh, like you said, uh, that they can do. It's... Yeah, it's an awful lot of triggers to remember, and if you're if you're playing it for the first time, don't expect it to go well because you're gonna forget. And if you came up against it for the first time, uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's one hundred percent my game style. Oh, it was my style. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll like be Oculus. back in the game soon. I I bet. <laughs> right. Uh, it's certainly not my co-host style. My uh, Nick just goes, I have bombs, and I slam, and that's it. He has not moved on from Nimiranda. <laughs> oh, God. Still playing it? No, he's just now trying to get it in 2.0 by using uh, Major Vendor or flying okay. uh, K-Wing still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Nick just likes bombs and slamming. That's the only two things he's good at. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. He rips me for flying the... Uh, the Lancer, or call it the, def the Defiant, as he does. So, yeah, we give as good as we get.
Uh, but, it takes a few rounds, if you can yeah, see. Yeah, I, I don't expect the, the engage to come quickly. Both players have got a lot of respect for each other and what the list can do. Um, yeah, I don't think the engage will come very quickly. It's going to be a very calculated risk for Jules when he wants to engage. And uh, Nicholas will want to make sure he's got all his triggers lined up for when he engages. So, I mean, it's not Ollie and Ben Lee. Uh, if you've ever watched those two play a game, you'll get an engagement uh, about an hour in. And then the last turn will take 45 minutes. <laughs> exactly, Nick's in slamming bombs. Yeah, that's what Nick does. That's all he does. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the audience bought out by this, but if you are good and playing X-wing, it's part of the strategy. It's not um, uh, like uh, you are uh, you are afraid of it, but mm. you 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 want uh, you you you're waiting for the right opportunity to make your choice and it's uh, clearly a mind game 100 percent um yeah if you are just new to the game and you're watching this wondering why they aren't engaging quicker or uh, if you're not into the, the if you are a more casual player not necessarily into the more competitive scene or um wanting to learn uh tactics per se then yeah this may not be the most uh, fascinating game of all time in terms of nothing's going to blow up particularly quickly until you get into it. For those of us who are the comp more competitive players or who do enjoy the more strategic games, this will be one to watch purely because of how these players are going to go about getting their win conditions and how many different win conditions there are, how many strategies they can employ, how many times they can reshape the board in a single turn. It's a very thinky game, and if you are into that sort of thing, you're going to enjoy it very much. Yeah. And uh, usually, for me personally, those are the games that I like uh, I like to watch uh, most. Uh, it's not the ones uh, where you have shooting really fast and lots of dice being thrown, uh, because I think games like these are very strategically uh, played and um, a lot of mind games and stuff happening. Uh, are the ones where you learn the most from, uh, even while just watching them. Now you can you can could follow up the the uh, situations. Yeah, you have to not feel you things going around deep. Oh, Dolly, you're you're a bit cut off. Uh, uh, yeah. One thing in the comments there uh, from our lovely Charles uh, Death Rain there saying casual players joust, competitive players dance for an hour, then joust. Unless you're, for me, unless you're Cromwell, in which case you just joust. It's stale. <laughs> I said the last one, I'll say it again cause, just because it's Cromwell. Uh, and Crystal Berks, and then, so, of course, this is high level X Wing, uh, of course, writer of the World Championship winning list back in 2019 for Ollie, uh, which is something that Ollie will never ever. Uh, get away from as long as Christopher is still drawing a breath. <laughs> but yes, but to, to, to come back to the, yes, this is high level X Wing. Um, we are filling the gap at the moment between um, the players actually getting to an engagement. Uh, doesn't mean the game is boring in any way, shape, or form. We are kind of trying to provide uh, a conversation, but the game itself is going to be absolutely fascinating to how it will be concluded because these two players, as I said, have got a lot of respect for each other. I know them both uh, personally and the way their minds work. I mean, I don't know anybody who can do maths on the fly quicker than uh, Jules. He can. He always knows the averages. He always knows exactly what he should do, when he should do it. And I've never seen anyone do it better. Ollie, again, is on that same level of working out the win conditions just like that on the fly. Um, and Nicholas is always thinking two, three, four turns ahead, making sure everything works out. So, yeah, as much as we're trying to have a conversation, as much as we're enjoying uh, chatting away whilst we're watching the game, I know all three of us are sat here going, this is going to be a good one. Yeah. Uh, those are the games uh, where you can see uh, the similarities a little bit between X-Wing and chess. This, this uh, thinking two and three turns ahead. Uh, of course, we have... Lots of uh, other var variables uh, coming into play in X-Wing. Um, but uh, if people ask me uh, what X-Wing is, if I tell them yeah, I'm, I'm 
committed to this game and and, and uh, doing a lot of hours uh, and spending time with X-Wing. Uh, I say it's like it's a little bit similar. Uh, it's like Star Wars chess with dice. <laughs> it is, but it's also a bit of poker as well because you have it to is. bluff. Yes. Yeah, I think it's more poker than than chess. I mean, it's both. Um, it, it has elements of chess. Yeah, you, you have all openings, and you have uh, like uh, every every piece on the board has different moves it can take and stuff. So it's so... A sp space poker chess with dice. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so back in the game, uh, for me, it seems uh, that's when it's a little bit exposed because that Foslo is far behind. Yeah. What do you think? So I agree. I think he's a little far out at the moment. Um, I, the stress is also going to be a problem if he wants to uh, do yeah. a drop with Thermal Detonators on Delay Fuse to try and get an action. Um, I think Nicholas is now finally lining up to come through the gas clouds with um, Torquil and Jostero. He'll bring Tarani back to bear and, of course, use... I think he's now going to use the Black Sun Viper as a flanker rather than a blocker. Um, and yeah, I can see that the engage is finally starting to come together. I'm not sure Jules is going to be entirely happy with how it's going to play out in terms of where Ved is, especially as you uh, just alluded to, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I would like Ved to be closer in. Uh, with having no afterburners as well, what, you know, he can't do a hard three and boost him to try and make up that gap, so... Where he goes, we'll see. Yeah, I really like that barrel roll on Tarani here. Uh, opens up, opens up uh, some more possibilities for triggering that uh, bullseye ability. Yep. And also for range management. Uh, I don't see any defense gas clouds here by Nicholas. Could be a problem. Could so, be. Uh, I think by the looks of it, he's wanted to go hard after Tarani. He wants to get that snapshot off the board as quickly as possible. I mean, this is the one thing the players uh, would have been working out uh, as the game was progressing. The correct kill order for both of their lists. Who they want to get rid of first, who they want to... Um, save on their own hides and i think that uh jules will want to get rid of um tarani first however the first shot will be going oh, into the yeah. viper very close call but death mm. rain's got range on uh the star viper here yep primary shot only just the one and he is safe yeah he is only just out on just arrow or else i guarantee you that would be aimed to just arrow Oh, and by the way, the arcs are the uh, Viper doesn't even have a shot back. Yeah, because of the angle, no? Mm. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I just want to give a quick shout out to Julian uh, for uh, making us uh, spectators a little bit more easier. Uh, he always puts like big tokens uh next to his cards and the ships he even did that uh when i was streaming german nationals uh, i think it was two years ago he even brought his own tokens like stream size tokens he does he has his own special stream size uh which uh we haven't had him on our stream yet we really should get him on our stream we've, we've, we've spoken to him he's just uh get everything organized um but yes having the large tokens always helps we have a bunch of our own uh, stream as well. Dom got into a habit of taking them with him, <laughs> which got a bit infuriating sometimes when we didn't know where they were, but uh, no, they're always good to have. Yeah. Um, getting back to the game at hand, though, players are now setting their dials for the coming turn. Um, Jules is going to take a little bit longer here. I am worried for Death Rain this turn, though. I do think he's a little too far forward. Yeah, the problem is he could be blocked, so it's not possible for him to uh, fully go straight. Yeah. 
So definitely lots of shops, shots happening uh, in the next round. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, the good thing about the, the shots last round, although I did no damage, is given um, Jules, although equally um, Nicholas as well, knowledge of those ranges and um, very importantly, how far Death Rain can move to be, still be out of snapshot range. Mm. The bullet quo and Jester looks fine. Yeah. Can move very. Uh, what's the name? Not fast. The opposite. Slow. <laughs> 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 oh, thank you for the very, very uh, strange word that I don't find in my mind. <laughs> yeah, all those. Uh, technical terms. Uh, yeah, I guess he, he will stay behind a little bit with Torkel, maybe. Uh, because if you expose him too much and he is the um, most expensive piece in your list. Mm. So you don't want to expose him uh, too much. Also, very important part in that list. Uh, you might uh, get in a little bit faster with Jostero. Hmm. Hoping for maybe a snapshot uh, bullseye Tarani trigger happening on another ship that is not being shot at by a snapshot so that uh, Jestro gets his bonus shots, gets another shot. Even if he dies, if he does enough damage, uh, it will still be worth it. Yeah. Okay, so Jules going for the delay fuses focus uh, here with uh, death ring gone for the barrel as well intriguing so he did the barrel roll linked focus. So there you go. Torkel taking it slow. Acon block. This one on the cloud. For the strain token, maybe. Uh, potentially. I don't know. Oh, what do you think? Uh, what is? You have to, you have to fly fast. So. Oh, no. Okay. Ignore him. For a reason. There's Jostro. Not coming in too fast. Nope. It keeps the arc nice and wide, but at the same time yeah. provides... For next good. round as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Provides good cover. Um, so there's Sharani. So he has to... Uh, uh, um, Julian has to go a little bit faster with the Inquisitors because of the uh, Thermal Detonators. So... Probably doing something like a two bank to get out of the thermal detonators, but still not be in range for a snapshot. Well, he's, got the delayed, he's got the delayed fuses on the thermal detonators, so he doesn't have to worry too much. Uh, are there on both of them? Oh, they're, they're, yes. they're just right oh. next, even the, with the big tokens, and I don't see them. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. yeah, I was just looking on the on the um, bomb uh, token and didn't see anything on it, so. I completely ignored it when we were lying <laughs> next to them. <laughs> right next to them, yeah. And they're a lot easier to see than the bombs themselves. <laughs> True. <laughs> Death Rain did take a strain from the uh, from the cloud there. Yeah. A little so, outline um, for the points. Why is there no snapshot uh, for, uh, on Death Rain? Uh, 
it is a May ability. He's probably saving it for an, maybe for another ship. Uh, had a good, uh, was a good unless he wants, unless he wants to say the strain for his primary shot on Death Rain. You guys are trolling, right? Why? This is not the last scum list, it's a new scum list. We have no snapshot on <laughs> Tarani. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was just looking for the cards <laughs> and I couldn't find it. Oh, oh they get it, they get it. We are proofing you guys. Yeah, which was just a test. It was just a test for chat, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, fun more calling us out. Life on tape. Why, why didn't he do it sooner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's just keep talking and talking about snapshot. <laughs> oh my. Uh but bullseye on seventh sister. So that's the Tirani shot. Spending the focus. Perfect. Two hits and a crit. And uh, is safe now. Just a roll. Three hits. Okay, so next shield, so seventh sister down half points. Do you track the first, the first token? Hmm. So. Ah, yes. Seven oh. sister have zero. The one is suck the first off. Yeah. Oh, the anchor trees in there. There's, um, you know, Nicholas is saving snapshots um, that he didn't, so hard he didn't bring it, he's saving it for the next tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so, bad fossil. Such a good ship, by uh, the way. So, I often play it. Star Viper completely blanking out. Losing the shield. And taking one more damage. Uh, so now that is a crit that was a direct. Direct. So it's coming in. Evade it. Safe. You still have the focus token. That's annoying. <laughs> mm. Oh, Natty's hated crit from Torkel. Yep. Takes hit and crit on Seventh Sister, and it is damage. A dead Seventh Sister. So, Nicholas taking the lead, 50 points to 23. Yep. Mm -hmm. 50 points. Uh... That was brutal. So, we've got one more shot from the Star Viper onto Bad Voslo. Hit crit. Dodged it. Safe. But it shows how important uh, focus fire is sometimes. Oh, you can never underestimate focus fire. The thing with X-Wing is don't get greedy. Uh, if you can kill a ship, even if it takes everything sometimes, you do it. You want to make sure you guarantee. Yeah. Um, if you split up your fire, uh, the only time you should split up your fire is if, um, in my opinion, is if you have a ship that can physically not fire at the target you really want to get gone. 
if you've got opportunity, for example, um, if something is strained at range one, then maybe take the shot, depending on the, the situation. It is a, yeah, focus fire is a very good way of, um, of getting your win conditions uh, as quickly as possible. It does, yeah, it's always situational. I mean, it's take it as red. There's a lot of um, different places and different games where focus fire doesn't necessarily help if you want splash damage. Um, if you are, uh, you know, sometimes you get pigeonholed into doing it. You have no choice where you've, something just won't die. They keep rolling that single uh, natural evade every time in a row. You have to put more fire into it than you need to. Uh, but general rule of thumb is if you have a win condition, if there's a ship that, um, a target priority, you focus fire on that ship first and then go from there. But it all depends on what's presented to you. How, you know, just because you have an idea of a setup you want, and just because you have an idea of an engagement you want doesn't mean you're going to get it. So yeah. that is always a moving target, but definitely focus fire is something that um, is a good strategy to use. Great explanation. I think uh, there are a few exceptions here. So early game with beefy lists, sometimes the, uh, um, the wing conditions evolving, so you mm. get shots they are better than others, so you set range one or so you 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 um, get your shots to make in general more damage than in the damage on one ship. Hmm. So you attack the 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 HP from the whole squad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. And also sometimes there's also uh, there's strategy involved in not focus firing if you want a token strip if you've got shots coming back into you that you know they they're going to focus fire sometimes you want to get rid of all their mods so that you can have the best chance possible of surviving um and also when it comes down to a target priority uh is key i'm gonna bring up something actually nick put in the chat here saying tarani is a trap in this list tall kill is target number one uh what do you guys think of that um Oh, it's hard to tell. I mean, um, Torkoal is, first of all, worth more points. Uh, it has the thermal detonators who can be uh, a threat for the Inquisitors. And we have Zem Wessel on, on Torkoal. Also, like, the debuff with the initiative. So, it, it, at the start of the game, I also would say uh, Torkoal Mux is uh, target priority number one. Um, and uh, I mean, now you, you, you would probably want to finish off the Star Viper, uh, but if you concentrate too much on, on the Star Viper, that gives the other ships uh, time to, to, to get in your flank or get behind. And, um, so I'd still probably try to, uh, concentrate fire on, on Torkoal here. Oh yeah. No, I think at the game at hand, you focus on Torkoal, um, Nick was referring to the list in general, but I, and so I agree with what you're you're saying for sure. Um, and that's the thing you got to watch out for in this list. Tarani is the look at me, look at me, look at me. I have the tricks. I have the missiles. I am the danger. Whereas Torquil actually does a lot of the providing the um, the triggers. Um, of course, we all know now that um, Tarani uh, has a secret snapshot hidden in that list it's now underneath a card somewhere you can't quite see it but we all know it's there that's why you want him gone <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah it breaks the synergy when you take a token off yeah but yeah i, th I th you can see each, um uh, see nicholas is very careful with torque he managed the torque uh, range three here so he can probably suck off um, a lot of damage because of the lot of focus token so i think against an unexperienced player it's kind of um what's the name for it um uh, what is the german word that you're thinking of i ah da komm ich ich komm nicht mehr auf das deutsche wort not even remembering the german one Ein Lockvogel. Uh, yeah, it's a, a bait. Ah, yeah. 
Yeah. And I think sometimes in tournaments, uh, unexperienced player uh, uh, do or uh, do debate. And yeah, they good will, for you. They will go for it. Yeah. You go for it. Oh. It's I mean, good for you. You have three green dice and suck off the damage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in this case, we we uh, don't have any ex unexperienced player playing the game right now here. Uh, but you're definitely right. Yeah, not here, but in the Swiss. So you have uh, maybe one, two, or three rounds there. The where the um, the tricks are helping you to uh, save some brain energy. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Um... Thumbwalk, not really that out on on air. <laughs> so it's not as I'm, I'm just, just 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 not reading that out. Um, no. But yeah, bait and switch um, and traps are all part of the, the strategy that both players will use. Any good player, X wing, any good X wing player will use. Any actual good sportsman will use will be um, as well. We, we were talking about being kind of poker earlier as well. Is that bluff? It's that. Um, what I'm presenting to you isn't quite what it seems, and actually, no, you really want to take this when it's not um, where you want to be. Uh, Coming here from oh, from from what they're saying, yeah, this is an unhappy Ved. Yes, Ved um, isn't in the best place at the moment. No, nope. um, that range one shot from uh, Drostero is going to hurt. Uh, did he uh, roll for the um, strain? Uh, I think he did. Okay. But you might want to get the judge just to double check. But I think he did. Oh, he did. Yeah, okay. yeah chat's saying he did, yeah. Oh. Hit and two crits. Spent the block. Uh, okay, it's fine for now. Spends the force to change that focus result into an evade. The better Inquisitors have so much value. Oh, the lucky roll that into a crit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Boslo losing both shields. At least the crit's not coming through. Stop off a shot on fifth brother. Or hit crit. Hit crit. No. Yeah. Taking the focus and is safe. Uh, range one shot. Range one. Yep. Side arc. Oh, hit crit crit out of hand. Oh, takes that's two crits, two crits into bed. And there was the direct oh. involved. So Voslo off the board. Yep. Oh, pretty unlucky here. It's not good because uh, I would talk about Fat Voslo. How good is it? <laughs> <laughs> was. Was. Yeah. Yep. Ved is can... uh, very, very good and underrated, and Jules has done an excellent job with him. But the most yeah. people, I think, the most people look at that the pilot ability and think, ah, oh, the initiative four, it's not so good. But so the good. pilot ability gives you the one turns. Yep. And so Fed Fossil is one of the best dials in the game. Correct. And, and then you and print it. To go, out I take the four K make it. Yeah, yeah. So the bids take the 3k and make it into a 4k or 5k as well. It's just, it's just, it's an amazing yeah. dial. Comes on top, yes. Mm. I like her so much. You had him uh, in your list that you played uh, in the in the first hyperspace trial uh, season, right? Yes. Bad fossil. Yes. Uh, you had two two um, what are they called? Two reapers. The two named reapers. 
then countdown and fat for slow. Oh yeah. So you can you have the you have nice the list. chance to power up the fat for slow with the target and the focus. Mm -hmm. Or you can give her give her a bell roll and then you can turn the one this very powerful combinations is, is a propeller before you move. Yeah, pre barrel roll and then heart one is such an amazing yeah. move. Yep. When you have the one the one uh, turn, it's basically basically this what the Phantom makes so strong. He bell roll with a tool and then comes out with the one. Everyone knows it. Okay, we've spoken a bit about win conditions and target priorities in this game. Uh, we have half an hour remaining. Uh, Jules is down 96 to 23 as it stands. Um, he's got an uphill mountain to to climb at this point. Um, uh, Jules can do it. I know him, him well. He won't give up. But what do you think is his target priority here? What do you think he goes after? So he needs 73 points. Um, so he has to kill Torkel and get half points on uh, another ship. For example, finishing off the Black Sun Enforcer. Um, which it's dangerous. is very it's dangerous, yeah. A little bit care of the Black Enforcer. So it's a new bait. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't hear. I'm not really sure that uh, the Black Enforcer is uh, a good a good target now because you have a two dice, a two two and two dice uh, attack, so the Black Enforcer is not the best target for it. Yeah, and to, you cannot uh, use your thermal detonators because the Black Enforcer is very maneuverable. Hmm. I think the Black Enforcer will not die in this game. Uh, I think it will. I think it's going to die to a diamond boron missile. The only missile you can... Because he's going to fire that in, into him damage. and then get it. Sorry, go on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so fire the, the diamond boron missile into him and get the splash damage the best he can. And that's a very painful shot there from uh, Josh Darrow. Oh, that's two shields and one into the hull. That is a very, oh, that is a sad fifth brother. Oh, death rain. Oh. Losing all shields. Yep. Oh. Oh, I f oh, three eyeballs into three eyeballs from the the diamond boron missile there from from Jules. Oh I, wow! I have to feel for him there. That is that is cruel uh, to lose so much of your list and then to 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 get the the cruelest. Everything is paint, but it's the wrong paint. Oh, I feel for Jules there. Oh, he will not be happy. That's good. So I have right. He don't die. <laughs> <laughs> well, yep, you are good, right, yes. Ask me, I know it. <laughs> no, I forget the Baron missiles. So, Nicholas have to be safe. There's a cool barrel roll and makes more than range one between him and um Torani. Overlay does need uh, updating there. The points now are uh, even heavier in uh Nicholas's favor and I'm not sure if he's got um half on death range. He's got the shields down death range, not half just yet so he's he's not out of it entirely but 
it, it's getting quite insurmountable at this point. So, fifth brother down to one hull. 